So I don't want to make this as a, a formal talk or anything. Wow. <laughs> um, so, welcome to the Google office. Uh, I know you have all been meeting uh, at a different place for the Android meetup for the last couple of months. I have been frequenting that place as well, off and on. And I thought it would be a real pleasure to actually host you for one of the meetups here in our office. And um, I'd like to thank the organizers for you know doing such a wonderful job, getting the community together around Android, uh, you know helping you know developers just learn about new technologies. Every time I've been to the meetup, something new has been talked and discussed. I mean, they will talk about Android Wear and they showed the cardboard and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, so today, uh, I think we'll have two speakers from uh, Google who will talk about Boris. We'll talk about material design. Is that right? That's right. Perfect. So Boris and I work in the same group, which is the developer relations team, and uh, uh, our job here is to essentially help the local developers be successful uh, around Google tools and technologies. Uh, we also run this program called the Google Developer Groups, which is again a similar kind of a program, just like the Android user group, the Google Developer Group focuses on a broad set of Google technologies. We also have a program called the Google Business Groups, which is essentially focused for helping developers and business users become more successful with their applications by incorporating the best practices on marketing, advertising, using the right tools and technologies. So building a successful app, making sure it's being able, you can monetize that and make money of that, that's actually very, very important. So between the Android user group, the Google developer groups, the business groups, I think you should get a very well-rounded information about uh, everything that Google actually has to offer. So I'll not take uh, any more time and have uh, Boris come and then after that, Karina is there, she's going to talk about cloud. Um, is that oh, Melina is yeah, talking first, okay.
our own service. So at the end of the day, we really consider ourselves an infrastructure company. I'm not sure anybody, many people know this, but we actually want the world's largest server manufacturers. We actually decide how to put the parts together, we decide how to design it, we decide how to cool it. And this is really the foundation for the services that uh, consumers know and love. So things like search, Gmail, uh, Maps, uh, Chrome, Android, and YouTube, they're all run on our infrastructure. And the last icon there is actually the Google Cloud Platform, because actually the Google Cloud Platform is us making the very same infrastructure that we built all the Google services on and make it available for customers to use. So at the end of the day, you are able to use the same tools, systems, and processes that our developers are at Google use, with the same kind of performance, reliability, and cost. And, 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 yeah, cost. So that's infrastructure. And uh, we are also pretty unique in the sense that we are the only IS, non-ISP in the world that have our own, that have made our own submarine cables. Right? So we have made our own fiber optic uh, cables on the oceans all over the world. And we also peer directly uh, with the major ISPs. Uh, so what this means is that for our services and also for our customers' uh, services, it actually reduces latency and increases, increases the performance for their applications. Right? Uh, so that means that we, we, you handle your traffic, we actually take that traffic and pass it directly to the end ISP. Um, and I think right now the world is talking a lot about uh, software-defined networks. Um, and the thing is that Google has been doing this. Um, we have run on the global open floor for the past two years already. Uh, this really helps us to improve uh, operational operations and also improve uh, decrease cost and improve performance for our network. So we have this network that connects all our data centers all across the world. Um, and then, uh, in terms of software, we are very, very much um, a, a computer science company as well. Uh, when we first wanted to do search, and this is in 2002, in order for us to do a search, we needed to make a copy of the internet. And there wasn't a technology that enabled us to do that, and so we invented one, and we called it uh, the Google File System, GFS for short. And once we did that, we needed a way to query this data set. And so we came up with MapReduce. And during this time, uh, what was good was that we were able to publish white papers whenever we actually came up with a new technology and share this with the community. And from MapReduce, this led to the big data revolution. So if you have heard of Hadoop, Hadoop is actually built off the MapReduce white papers that were released. Um, and you can see in red there, there's Dremel. And Dremel is the latest technology that we use in-house uh, for our big data analytics. Right? And I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so this is, you know, this is a quote from not us, you know, we didn't say this. I think everything that we've talked about, whether it's our infrastructure, our network, or our software, we think that this is really going to change the game of uh, cloud computing, everyone. And um, I think yesterday we, uh, we, we had a cloud roadshow in San Francisco and we announced a lot of uh, more features and tools for developers that we think are uh, really game changing. Okay. So what is, uh, where does the Google Cloud Platform product sit in? So uh, I think you're all very familiar with these terms, infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, and software as a service. So the Google Cloud Platform services are really these two parts, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. So we, we always get this question, so things like Gmail, Hangouts, and Drive, um, those are software as a service, and they actually have a different uh, set of products for Google Apps. Right? So we just focus on IAM and IAM. So before I go into exactly what our services, why don't I take a video to share with you what uh, some of our customers know about the Google Cloud Platform. The things I love about Google Cloud Platform is uh, scalability. For tolerance and performance. Performance. App engine. Big query. The scaling ability. We've been able to scale from thousands of users to millions of users. It allowed us to focus on our product and we grew really fast. Because of the Google Cloud Platform, we could make investments in our product first as opposed to infrastructure. So we could iterate really quick on building the right product. Yeah, so it's a really short video, but I think um, really, really good snippets of um, the different product that we have, App Engine, BigQuery. So, so here's 
um, our services. So when we think about uh, building an application, we think of it um, as three buckets, compute, storage, and app services. So in terms of compute, uh, we have two services. Actually, we have three, but I'll get a little later. Um, we have infrastructure as a service, which is compute engine. Uh, this is basically uh, virtual machines uh, that are that get connected via a global encrypted private network. Um, meaning we have one server in okay, one VM in Asia, another VM in uh, America. They actually talk to each other as though they're on a local network, and this is because we basically have our own network, which is what I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, for App Engine, it is our platform as a service. So platform as a service, really all you care about is writing your code and your application, and you leave everything else to us. So we provide the whole everything um, helps with scaling. So basically, all you need to do in App Engine is to indicate uh, response time. So for example, you indicate that you only you want your response time to be 100 milliseconds to your users. Just at SLA, and whenever we hit beyond that response time, uh, App Engine automatically spins up new instances. Right, so it's very easy to set up uh, very low management, and you don't really you don't need a system administrator. So I want to go in depth into these two products. So here are some key features uh, for infrastructure as a service offer, which is Compute Engine. Um, and the reason why we have this here is because I know that. Um, a lot of you might be on other cloud providers, right? And other cloud providers may not have some of the links that I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning in this slide. So one example is sub hour billing. Um, a lot of cloud providers, they actually are uh, billed by the hour, right? So if you only use 15 minutes, you actually have to pay for the entire hour anyway. Um, for us, we bill for the first 10 minutes and every minute after, right? So you only pay for what you use. Um, and for our VMs, you can mount up to 10 terabytes of persistent disk. Uh, and I know other cloud providers, you can only mount up to one terabyte. And we also support SSD persistent disk. Um, and in the, in the um, event yesterday, we announced we also support the local VSD and IOPS uh, applications. Uh, we offer snapshotting. We have over 64 instance types. So whether it's standard, high memory, uh, high CPU, we have a lot of options and flexibility to choose uh, the VMs that you want. Uh, we have advanced networking, and this is things like uh, VPNs. Um, we also have this is live migration. So live migration is something very, very, very unique to us. Does anyone know what live migration is here? Okay, so live migration um, is very specific to Google. Um, and what it is is if you are, if you have an instance running in a particular zone or a data center, um, for other cloud providers, and if, if they are doing a maintenance, say they are doing a patch in that in that zone, right? What they'll do is they'll send you an email, right? And they'll say, okay, this notification of uh, downtime maintenance that you guys have to move your application somewhere else. So it's a lot of work on the developer's end. But for us, what we do is if there's a maintenance down a certain zone, we automatically move your instance from one zone to another zone and back again, right? So you don't need to do anything. So we call this live migration because it's literally live migration this zone, it comes back again without any interference. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so that's live migration. And uh, we also have load balancing. So we have two types of load balancing. One is network load balancing. So basically, uh, the same traffic and routes to different VMs. Um, and uh, we also have HTTP load balancing at data set layer 7. So it actually works to different uh, zones for data centers depending on the locality or geographical locality of the user. Um, we also have faster boot times and auto restarts of VM. So this is, um, so I've always heard, I've heard some customers say that, you know, infrastructure as a service, um, virtual machines, is very much becoming a commodity, right? So I believe it is in some ways, but not, in, in other ways it really isn't, right? So there are clearly some technological advances I believe that Google has that our cloud, uh, that other cloud providers don't have. 
So don't take my word for it, but this is done by a uh, third party. So uh, he has a blog, I think he's a guy from Scala. And he actually tested Google Compute Engine with uh, another leading cloud provider. No names, but we all know who it is. <laughs> so they tested it on three fronts, so latency, bandwidth, and instance creation time. So as you can tell um, in the graph, we perform pretty well, right? We perform better than the other leading cloud provider on all fronts. But I just want to call out to uh, instance creation time. So for instance creation time, not only are we faster, we are also very, very consistent, right? You can see that uh, the other leading cloud provider, it fluctuates quite a bit from, uh, you know, it go up to two to three times more than uh, the, the, the minimum. So but for us, you know, we keep, we keep about 30 to 40 seconds. Okay, um, and App Engine. So App Engine, I believe, is truly a, a pretty, very, very unique product. Um, I don't think there's anything in the market that's very similar to it at all. Uh, it's platform as a service. Uh, you only buy your code. You don't care about anything else. Um, it allows for scalability, versatility. It's very, very easy to set up. And um, for speaking to many of the customers, what they really like are you know some of the features that we have, like cloud endpoints, uh, which helps you to generate. Um, uh, client ID so iOS, Android, and JavaScript. Um, there's cache and class queue. So all these really makes it very, very easy for them to create uh, mobile applications. So um, for my understanding, startups really love this product. And it has been one, it's actually one of our first uh, DCP products. Okay, so I talked about infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. And I think in the traditional uh, cloud computing world, these two things have been seen as very, very separate, right? Infrastructure as a service where you have full control of all the GMs and platform as a service where you know this this ease of management. But we think that it shouldn't be so 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 separate, right? Um, so that's why we are blurring the lines between IAS and PAS, and we have something called uh, managed VMs. So managed VMs sits in between these two. So for platform as a service, we we require the developer to write in uh, one of the four major languages programming languages like Java, Python, PHP, and Go. So if you're not running on any of these languages, it means you can't use that for the service, which is quite a pity because you might really, really not want to care about VMs, but yet you can't use it for that. <coughs> now you're able to do so with managed VMs. So managed VMs really gives you the ease of management um, from platform as a service, but essentially you're actually running on, uh, uh, it's on our VMs. So this gives you, uh, you know, flexibility of both worlds. So this thing at uh, Managed VMs is currently still in beta, but hopefully it will come, come out uh, in the uh, um, line for general, general accessibility. Okay, and then we move into storage. So in terms of storage, what we're really giving you is um, all the kinds of options that you require. So we have three, hopefully we'll announce more, more, more solutions for the storage one. Um, so with cloud storage, cloud storage is really just an object store. Um, and some of our customers use this for archival purposes, or storing uh, really large files, like video files or image files. Um, we have Cloud SQL. So Cloud SQL is a my, a MySQL uh, fully managed uh, relational database. And we have Cloud Data Store, which is a NoSQL um, uh, database. And lastly, we have <coughs> um, BigQuery. So with Sorry, app services. So with app services, um, you know the key thing really is uh, BigQuery, and BigQuery is um, it's our big data analytics as a service offering. So when I say analytics as a service, this what I mean is you don't need to say you want to provision for X number of VMs or you need to um, have X number of indexes. All you need is to upload your database, and your database uh, can be a CSV or a JSON file, and use uh, SQL-like language to query against it. And you get your answer back uh, within seconds. And we are talking about you know millions and billions of rows and terabytes, petabytes of data. So this is something that uh, is very interesting. A lot of we have partners like Tableau and ClickView. So Tableau and ClickView are actually back end powered by BigQuery, just that they provide a very pretty graphical interface. But uh, you yourself can actually use BigQuery on your own. So all you, all you need is to get an answer very fast on your big 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 amount of data. Uh, you can just Okay, so uh, currently we have over 4 million active applications in the cloud, and I'm going to share with you some of our more famous uh, case studies. So, 
everyone has heard of Snapchat, right? But not everyone has you know, knows that Snapchat is actually using App Engine as its backend. So um, they started with App Engine right from the beginning, and you know it started. It wasn't popular at the beginning of course. I know App is popular from day one, but it scaled very. It, it became popular very very fast, and today it's actually serving uh, 700 million photos a day. And this whole time, they didn't have to hire more developers. So I'm sure they hired a little bit more, but they still maintain a very, very small group of developers. And the reason they could do so is because they were on App Engine, and App Engine auto scales. Like the minute the response time hits a certain amount, a uh, certain milliseconds, it spins up new instances automatically. Right. So that's really not much management needed. Um, so Snapchat, they started with App Engine. Of course, now they're going to use more services like storage and big as well. Um, and then we also have Eurovision. So I'm not sure everybody knows what Eurovision is. But Eurovision is like the American Idol of Europe, right? So it's a very, very popular song contest, and they get um, their viewers or audience to vote for the winner. So you can imagine when they say, okay, the lines are open, or you know, the website is is, available, is, is, is live now for you to vote. The amount of hits they're going to get on your website. And they were getting about 15,000 requests a second when, they, when, they, when, they, when, they, when the website went live. And we were able to deliver 90% of the traffic in under 24 milliseconds. And so I think that's pretty fast. And my last example is uh, for MapR. So MapR actually, um, they, they, they broke the minute sort record. And the minute sort record is the amount of data that you can sort within one minute. And the previous uh, record holder, they had custom software and the custom hardware to clearly you're using on premise on your own servers. And they spent over hundreds and thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars actually um, breaking the record. So MapR came in and they were able to sort 1.5 terabytes of data um, in one minute using 8,400 cores. The previous record holder actually used three times as many cores. Um, and it ran on an uh, R actually did it on uh, compute engine. But the key difference here was the cost, right? So the other, uh, the previous record holder spent hundreds and thousands of dollars, but my only spent two hundred dollars. So I guess that's really the power of the cloud, right? Leveraging all this at a very low cost. So here are some more examples of our partners. So you can see some of them that I mentioned earlier: the Blue, the Hue, our Pandora, our. And uh, some of our customers. So we have, I talked about Snapchat, but we also have other very, very famous customers like Mobile, Khan Academy, Best Buy, uh, House, um, yeah, uh, yeah, and Pocket Gems as well. So it's not here. But, yeah, so here's more. So let me play another video. Uh, so this is specific for gaming. Uh, are there any gaming companies, developers here? 